Hello everybody, Tyrone the God 3 here, and welcome back to Dragon Ball Z Saga Reviews. In the last episode of these reviews, I reviewed the Saiyan Saga. Now we move forward to the battles on planet Namek with the Frieza Saga. This saga was actually called the Frieza Saga, it was also called the Namekian Saga, several things like that. It was called that basically because all the fights in this saga, well the main fights, basically take place on planet Namek. And this is the second arc in the Dragon Ball Z sagas. And in the last saga, I forgot to introduce, like, I forgot to talk about several things, but they connect to this one as well. And this is where we start to see several things, like, trends in. We start to see, like, less warriors with battle armor. As we see that, well, in this saga, we actually see the most warriors with battle armor. But we start to see, like, um, the inclusion of scouters, which was used in the last saga with the Saiyans. And... We also get to see like a lot of other things because this one's fairly connected to uh, the Frieza saga. I mean, this one's fairly connected to the Saiyan saga, excuse me. So, um, there's a lot to talk about and 30 minutes to talk about it. So, let's get on with that plot summary, picking up from where we last left off. Basically, what ends up happening at this point is that Gohan and Krillin go ahead and make arrangements with Bulma in order to head to planet Namek. Bulma actually learns... Uh, some of the Namekian language so that she could power up a spaceship that Kami landed in on Earth when he first landed on Earth because Kami's a Namekian too. So with that said, Gohan and Krillin were actually ready to go to planet Namek a lot earlier. Goku on the other hand had to recover so he had to stay behind for a while. Once they headed off the planet Namek, uh, Goku was healing up and he wound up healing up quickly by getting a sensu bean and then shortly waiting after for Dr. Brief to develop a spaceship which is the design of that spaceship was based off of a Nappa spaceship from when they landed on planet Earth uh, along with Vegeta but I think since Vegeta got away you know there you go. So when all that's said and done Goku's able to be fully healed and he sets off to planet Namek 2 but he's a lot later than Gohan and Krillin because you know of all of that plus there was a bit of inclusions into the ship like being able to uh, train under several times normal gravity and a lot of other cool features meanwhile Gohan, Bulma and Krillin land on planet Namek after bypassing a couple of like filler situations that I thought were pretty interesting and which you won't see in the Dragon Ball's uh, Kai series so you're out of luck if you don't you know if you don't watch the original Z series so once they land off the planet Namek they learn that they're not the only ones on planet Namek looking for the Dragon Balls it appears that Vegeta has landed on planet Namek here as well like he said he was gonna do after healing up and an even bigger threat is on planet Namek and this is where the entire saga revolves itself around and his name is Frieza cue the music Okay, um, anyway, Frieza has landed on planet Namek in search of the Dragon Balls as well because he learned that the Dragon Balls had the ability to grant the user any wish. His goal is basically the same as Vegeta's, to get immortality so that no one can kill him. So, with that said, Frieza's power is shown to be largely greater than every other person and no one dare cross him because if they do, Frieza can kill anyone in an instant, even his own men. He wastes no time killing his men and he's accompanied by Zarbon and Dodoria. Vegeta takes it upon himself to try to get the Dragon Ball so that he can go ahead and defeat Frieza once he becomes immortal. However, in order to do this, Vegeta is actually shown to be very strategic on how he's going to get the Dragon Balls. Knowing full well that a full out assault on Frieza would never work out, Vegeta decides to pick at Frieza's army bit by bit by bit by bit. And it actually works out pretty well. Vegeta starts his onslaught by killing off Kui. And then later on, Joe goes after Dodoria. But before all of that happens, we see that Frieza's men are interrogating the, uh, the people that live on planet Namek, the Namekians. And if you all look at the Namekians, you'll know they look awfully similar to Piccolo and Kami because Piccolo learned that he was a Namekian during the Saiyan Saga when Vegeta and Nappa said that there was a whole planet just full of Namekians. So at this point, they're interrogating the Namekians for their Dragon Balls and they've actually come pretty successful by taking quite a few Dragon Balls. 
However, what ends up happening is that Gohan gets overraged and ends up knocking out, well, punching Dodoria really fast in order to save one of the children after Frieza just got done killing another one. The child they end up saving, his name is Dende. Once they wound up saving Dende, they de tried to retreat so that they wouldn't end, so they end up won't get a, uh, get killed by the Doria. Krillin is man able to lose the Doria thanks to the solar flare technique. The Doria tries to chase them, however, gets stopped by Vegeta. Vegeta and the Doria end up having a fight, and Vegeta ends up beating the Doria. Once Vegeta ends up beating Dodoria, he also learns right before Dodoria died, Dodoria revealed that Frieza was the one that destroyed planet Vegeta and not a meteor. Once Vegeta realizes this, he seems like he doesn't really care and ends up killing Dodoria. I guess at this point, Vegeta's been through so much shit, he kind of really doesn't care. After this, Vegeta goes off to go find the rest of the Dragon Balls. It's also apparent that Vegeta's learned how to sense energy without the need of a scouter. Because of this ability that Vegeta has, it makes searching for the Dragon Balls a lot easier for him. But it also makes it a three-way battle of survival for Gohan, Krillin, as well as uh, Frieza's army. So we got ourselves a three-way search for the Dragon Balls going here on planet Namek with the Namekians more or less fighting to keep their home more or less intact. While all of this is going down... Um, Vegeta winds up meeting with Zarbon and he ends up having a fight with him. And things were actually going well with uh, Vegeta as Zarbon and Vegeta were on even terms. However, things make a turn for the worse for Vegeta when Vegeta learns that Zarbon has a sec has a transformation. This transformation increases Zarbon's power and Zarbon is able to knock Vegeta out to the point where he's at the bottom of the uh, ocean. At this point, Vegeta could wound up, wound up being killed, but he manages just barely to survive. And thank goodness for Zarbon, too, because Frieza gets mad at the fact that uh, Vegeta was almost killed because Vegeta's probably the only one who knows the location of the rest of the Dragon Balls that Frieza was looking for. So he orders Zarbon to go back and find Vegeta. At this point, Krillin and Gohan wind up getting a Dragon Ball. Krillin tries to get the Dragon Ball back to... Um, back to the hideout area where they've been putting the rest of the Dragon Balls but he winds up uh, finding Vegeta and Zarbon once that ends up happening Vegeta winds up fighting Zarbon again only this time because Vegeta had barely survived the clutches of death the last time Vegeta ends up getting what's known as a Zenkai boost I should probably explain this as well because it wasn't really explained in the last saga what a Zenkai boost is basically is after a Saiyan recovers from almost near death experience there their power increases a bit based on how much damage they received from the previous battle. So if a fighter was almost killed, then they get a lot of power to correct the mistake in order to fight the opponent yet again, if they live to, to fight another day that is. Because of the Zenkai boost, Vegeta is able to take the, uh, the power difference gap between him and Zarbon and completely eliminate it by killing off Zarbon. Because of this, Krillin has no choice but to give Vegeta the Dragon Ball and Vegeta winds up flying off. Headed towards Frieza's planet, uh, more than likely. Vegeta's actually able to trick the Frieza to the point where he had eluded them well enough to throw the Dragon Balls and chuck them all to different, uh, to all the way off into the lake. Because of this, he was able to not only retrieve the Dragon Balls from Frieza, but he was also able to get out of there intact and alive. Because of the distress, Frieza has no choice but to call in his best elite warriors in order to fight off against the, against Vegeta as well as retrieve the rest of the Dragon Balls in an orderly time. This elite pack of warriors is known as the Ginyu Force, the strongest fighters in the galaxy. And they're headed straight to planet Namek. Once all of this chaos winds up going down, they take Dende back to Elder Guru's place where Elder Guru unlocks a full potential from Krillin, then tells Gohan to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Once they take Gohan to go uh, to, to Guru's, Gohan winds up escaping with one of the Dragon Balls that he found in the uh, that he found that Vegeta threw previously. Because Gohan was able to use the Dragon Radar to find the Dragon Ball underwater, he was able to take it, but this pisses Vegeta off to a really high degree, both in the original series, Kai, and the abridged series. 
But once they were able to retrieve the Dragon Ball and get it out, Vegeta went on a rampage in order to find Gohan and Krillin in order to retrieve that last Dragon Ball. Once they go off to go find that last, uh, once Vegeta goes off to find that last Dragon Ball, Vegeta winds up sending power. This power is from the Ginyu Force. And because of this, Gohan gets his potential unlocked, as well as we also get to be introduced to uh, Nail, the character that's basically known to be the strongest Namekian on planet Namek. We also get introduced to Guru, who has, who's basically like the, the guardian of planet Namek. Like, he is the, the watchful chief of planet Namek. So because of all of this going down, and Gohan and Krillin are now souped up with unlocked potential power, and Vegeta has power has been powered up as well. Vegeta, rather than try to fight off against Gohan and Krillin, immediately senses the imminent threat known as the Ginyu Force, and tells Gohan and Krillin that he'll more than likely need their help in order to fight off against the Ginyu Force. At this point, we see the uh, fin we finally get to see the alliance between Vegeta, who was previously a villain and now teamed up with Gohan and Krillin for the sake of getting rid of a common foe. So because this all goes down, they all have to quickly go find the rest of the Dragon Balls and try to retreat before Frieza gets the chance to hunt them, uh, before Ginyu Force gets the chance to hunt them down. Unfortunately, the Ginyu Force catches up with them and is able to get the last Dragon Ball from Krillin because of Burner's speed. And G Goldo has the ability to stop time. So, once that ends up happening, they have no choice but to go and fight the Ginyu Force. While this is happening, Captain Ginyu decides to go take the rest of the Dragon Balls and bring them back to Frieza. Now, Captain Ginyu has all seven Dragon Balls, and Frieza finally has all seven Dragon Balls he needs in order to make his immortality wish. However, now Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta have to deal with, with basically, they have to deal with the Ginyu Force. So... The, the fights start off with Gohan and Krillin versus Goldon. For a while, Gohan and uh, Krillin are taking the advantage, but Goldon has the ability to freeze time, which causes difficulties for them. Vegeta winds up killing Goldo though, when he was when Goldo was distracted on Gohan and Krillin. Next up, where Raccoon goes in to fight off against Vegeta. And for a while, Vegeta actually showed to be having the upper hand, but Raccoon was able to change the pace of the fight. Krillin and Gohan were able to step in and sort of help Vegeta out, but it doesn't seem like it's doing that much good because Raccoon is leagues more powerful than Vegeta, Krillin, and Gohan at this point, and it seems like the all hope is lost for them. Until, that is, Goku winds up landing on planet Namek. Goku ends up fighting off against Raccoon and beats him with ease thanks to the 100 times normal gravity training that he was receiving while he was on the ship on the way to planet Namek. Afterwards, Vegeta believes that Goku has fulfilled the prophecy known as the legendary status of Super Saiyan, a transformation that Saiyans have transformed into once every 100,000 years, I can't remember. But at this point, uh, Goku is showing to be able to beat the Ginyu Force with little to no effort as Birder and Jace try to fight off against Goku, and Goku ends up knocking out Birder and almost beats Jace, but Jace retreats. Once this ends up happening, Vegito finishes the job by killing Raccoon and Birder, but then they have to go in and uh, find Captain Ginyu. Captain Ginyu goes off in order to fight off against Goku, and at this point, Nail is also fighting off against uh, against First Form Frieza. Frieza at his first form, and Fre Fer Frieza at his first form is beating Nail with little to no effort, and it, it's it's just brutal. But Nail was nothing more than a distraction because Dende was headed back to give the password to the Z Warriors so that they can go ahead and uh, unlock Paronga. Because Frieza had all seven Dragon Balls, but he was unable to summon the dragon. And this is because he has to speak in the native tongue of the Namekians. So because he can't do that, um, Dende winds up headed back to the Warriors in order to help them retrieve the rest of the Dragon ball, uh, Balls and make the wish. Meanwhile, while this is happening, Goku fights off against Captain Ginyu and is winning until Captain Ginyu hurts himself, changes bodies with Goku, and this is where we start a lot of chaos. Captain Ginyu and Jace wind up coming back to meet off, off with Krillin and Gohan, and Gohan and Krillin are confused at first, but put two and two together that that's Ginyu, not Goku. 
So Gohan and Krillin end up fighting off against Captain Ginyu and they're able to stand a pretty good chance because Captain Ginyu doesn't know the mechanics of Goku's body and can't use its power to its fullest advantage. While this is happening, Vegeta is fighting off against Jace. And Vegeta winds up killing Jace. Gohan and Krillin get to a point where they have an advantage over Goku. Vegeta comes up to finish the job. Captain Ginyu tries to switch bodies, but then Goku switches, so now Goku's back in his original body. Vegeta beats up Captain Ginyu. Captain Ginyu tries to switch with Vegeta, but Goku ends up throwing a frog, so now Captain Ginyu, his body is permanently a frog. Vegeta was gonna kill it, but Goku's like, screw it, let him go. So, so while that winds up happening, um... We see that Goku has taken a lot of damage, so he has to go in those rejuvenation chambers in order to heal up his body since they don't have any sensu beans or anything. Once Dende is back, uh, Dende ends up the, getting the Dragon Balls with, along with Gohan and Krillin while Vegeta takes a nap. They use the Dragon Balls in order to wish back Piccolo and to bring Piccolo to Planet Namek. So they were able to use two of the three wishes. Before the third one happens though, they're greeted with Vegeta. Once they're greeted with Vegeta, then uh, Vegeta gets pissed because they already used the first two wishes. They didn't, well, Vegeta didn't know that there was three, so there's still time for Vegeta to get immortality. The reason that Piccolo requested to come back and be on Planet Namek is so that one, he can assist in the fight against Frieza, and two, if he comes back, Kami comes back, and if Kami comes back, then that means the Earth Dragon Balls will come back as well. Which means they can use the Earth Dragon Balls in order to wish back the rest. So, once this is all said and done, Piccolo's back on Planet Namek. And he flies off in order to go meet the others, but then is stopped by the beaten and battered up Nail. Who agrees that they should go ahead and fuse their bodies. This is where Piccolo learns the fusion technique for, for, for Namekians. And once he learns how to do this technique, Piccolo's power increases dramatically because Piccolo's basically strong himself already, especially after King Kai's training, and Nail's the strongest Namek on planet Namek, so the two fuse make a very powerful warrior. Before making the third wish, however, Guru winds up dying due to old age, so Purunga ends up dying because of that as well. Once that's all said and done, Frieza winds up playing if landing in front of them pissed off that his chance for immortality was shot just like Vegeta's. However, the difference is that, you know, Frieza's more powerful, so him being pissed makes a lot more of a difference. Vegeta decides to set his pissed off aside in order to help Gohan and Krillin fight off against Frieza because they're gonna die anyway. They might as well go out fighting. Vegeta ends up fighting Frieza, and for a while, they're actually pretty evenly matched, but then Vegeta calls Frieza out on his bullshit because he knows that Frieza has another transformation. Now, a lot of people are pissed about this, but let's think about this for a second. Frieza would have transformed into second form if he found himself being threatened anyway, so I'm sure this wasn't really Vegeta's fault. He just sort of was like, cut the bullshit and transform. Frieza transforms, and it's obvious that he has much more of an advantage than he did before, and he ends up kicking the asses of... Piccolo, uh, nah, Piccolo's not there yet. Vegeta, Krillin, Gohan, respectively. Until, however, what ends up happening, Gohan gets blinded by rage. Oh, Krillin ends up getting what we thought was killed, but he just gets mortally wounded. It's at this point that we learn that Dende also has the ability to heal people thanks to Guru unlocking his potential. Krillin is able to keep second form Freeze at bay for a while. Gohan gets pissed with rage and ends up beating him. Uh, beating him up for a while, but then Frieza ends up getting pissed, taking the advantage. Piccolo, however, uh, arrives just in time and is able to turn the tables on Frieza thanks to him being fused with Nail. It's at this point that it actually seems like Piccolo is going to do a really good job, but then Frieza winds up revealing that he has another transformation. When Frieza ends up transforming into his third form, it makes a lot of difference. And it's clear here that Frieza has an advantage over Piccolo, and Piccolo is getting overpowered. Gohan's pissed off with Rage again this time, and manages to get a nice hit in on Frieza. But Frieza's tired of the third form and just wants to get things over with by transforming into his final form. It's at this point that Vegeta tells Krillin to injure him on purpose so that he can heal himself using Dende. Then the Zenkai boost will change the difference so that Vegeta can have the upper hand in the fight. After a while, Dende doesn't want to do this, but then he winds up getting influenced by Piccolo, which is fused with Nail, in order to do this so that Vegeta winds up getting healed. Once Frieza ends up transforming into his final form, Frieza wastes no time killing Dende, because he knows that Dende's been the one healing the Z Fighters this whole time. Vegeta, however, is able to make the difference 
out of this fight from them being completely killed because Vegeta, while he's not as strong as Final Form Frieza, is strong enough to at least see Final Form Frieza's attacks and how fast they were. Vegeta's been fighting off against Final Form Frieza for a while. Goku winds up getting fully healed and he ends up uh, heading his way to the battlefield. It's at this point, however, that Vegeta's getting his ass beat by Frieza and it's not looking very good for him. So, this is at this point where Vegeta's like bottled up with shame because of his power and how he's unable to really do anything to Frieza. At this point, once everybody's getting beat, Goku winds up arriving just in time while Vegeta's already injured on the ground. Goku receives a Zenkai boost from healing as well, and Vegeta basically states that Goku's become a Super Saiyan. Frieza's had enough of the Super Saiyan legend BS, kills Vegeta. And at this point, we see that Goku's pissed off about everything that Frieza's done up to this point. It's here that we also learn that on King Kai's planet, Yamcha, Tien, and Shaozu are fighting off against the Ginyu Force as a form of training. But that's only in the Z version. It's not in the Kai version, I think, because it's basically qualified as filler. At this point, Goku ends up fighting off against Final Form Frieza, and when Goku ends up fighting off against Final Form Frieza, it's clear that even Goku doesn't stand a chance against Final Form Frieza, as Final Form Frieza is wasting no time beating the crap out of Goku. It's at this point that Goku's options are running thin, and his only option now is to use the Spirit Bomb. However, Goku needs time, and time is something Frieza's not going to exactly give to him. So Piccolo, Krillin, and Gohan actually go in and help Goku bide for some time to get the Spirit Bomb. It's finally ready. Once it's finally ready, Goku launches that sucker at Frieza, and Frieza winds up getting hit. We all think that it's all set and done, and Frieza's destroyed, but Frieza winds up coming back up and wasting no time with his anger by killing off Krillin. Once he kills off Krillin, Goku gets bottled with rage and finally transforms into the thing that Vegeta had stated before. This is where the legend happens of Dragon Ball Z, where Goku reaches that pinnacle stage of transforming Super Saiyan. It's at this point that Goku's power is multiplied by 50 and is able to fight off against Frieza easily in his first form, or in his final form, excuse me. Frieza gets pissed and then states that he has the ability to increase his power by 100%. Goku actually gives him the chance to do this, but while this is happening, Frieza ends up enraged and uh, launches a bomb in order to destroy Planet Namek. However, the Death Ball isn't strong enough to destroy Planet Namek as a whole, it just hits the core, and the planet's supposed to explode in five minutes. <coughs> anyway, once that's all said and done, Gohan gets everybody into the ship, and Guru manages to get back up thanks to the Earth Dragon wishing back... Uh, wishing back people who have been killed by Frieza. When this ends up happening, uh, they tell them to teleport everybody to Earth. Once they tell them to teleport everybody to Earth, uh, Earth, that's what Perunga ends up doing. So all the Namekians, Vegeta, everybody is not only brought back to life, but they're brought to Earth. Goku stays on planet and then making fights off against 100% Final Form Frieza and for a while Final Form Frieza had the advantage but due to his power and stamina running out really fast Goku was able to change the course of this fight and gain the upper hand. Frieza's in bottle with rage and tries to slice Goku up with the death saucer. Goku ends up maneuvering his way past that and Frieza ends up not paying attention and ends up cutting himself up. Once he ends up cutting himself up to nothing more than a torso um, he begs for forgiveness. Goku gives him some energy. Frieza uses that energy, unfortunately, to try to kill Goku. Goku gets pissed with rage, blasts back at Frieza, knocks Frieza out, tries to get the planet Namek, but the uh, get off planet Namek. But the ship that Frieza came in is basically broken from the damage done to the, by their fight. So there's no way to get back. Goku is presumed dead in the explosion along with Frieza. And we that's basically all we hear from them at that point. It's at this point, too, that uh, Dende and the others decide to go use Perunga's Dragon Balls to wish Yamcha, Tien, uh, Yamcha, Tien, and Krillin back, and Chaozu. Once they all get wished back, the Namekians de uh, decide to go to a new planet, Amic, and they leave off. And we're left wondering if Goku lived from that explosion or not. We learn that Goku is alive, but he's chosen not to be wished back here immediately because there's some form of training that he's doing. So until then, our Z Warriors have to wait till Goku arrives back on planet Earth within like three, like some years. And that's basically the end of the Frieza saga. Whew! 
So as you can see, the Frieza Saga introduces a lot of things like power levels and uh, things like that. But this is the saga where power levels kind of end because scouters aren't really used anymore. The last scouter to really be used was the one that Frieza used on Vegeta before it blew up. So with that said, what do I think about this saga? Well, in terms of sagas, this is the, my second favorite saga, only being beaten by one other. And I, the thing I love about this saga, just like this long explanation of the plot I just said, a lot of crap happens in Planet Namek. I really like how much is going down here. I think this, I think Planet Namek's responsible for the most fights in Dragon Ball Z. As you can see, you've got like the fight against Vegeta versus all of Frieza's, well, most of Frieza's prized henchmen. You got the fight between Goku and the Ginyu Force as well. And then you got the fight between Goku and Frieza. You got the fight between Piccolo and Frieza on his second form. Gohan and Krillin stay there the whole time and they get cool new battle armor, which is awesome. And I forgot to mention that part too. While Goku is healing Vegeta, gives them battle armor to replace their regular clothes and at this point we also see that while vegeta isn't exactly a good guy at this point he more or less is a, at this point i'd say he's anti-neutral like he's a villain with neutral tendencies or a, no he's a he's neutral with villain tendencies he's a jackass basically because he literally beats up gohan once they make it back to planet earth because you know they just wanted to have a fight and he keeps talking shit about Goku and Gohan won't take the disrespect anymore. It's at this point that, like, I love, I, first of all, Frieza's a really good villain. I have to say that. That's one thing going for this saga that, that's really good as well. Frieza's a damn good villain. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Vegeta threatened to blow up the Earth. How is Frieza any different? The thing about Frieza, Frieza's heartless. There's one thing to be destructive, like a lot of Dragon Ball Z villains. There's another thing to be heartless. Frieza is freaking heartless. Like, the bastard's heartless. He kills children without a second thought. This is the type of villain we're dealing with right now. He wiped out an entire Saiyan race. He basically wiped out an entire Namekian race. And he, ba yeah, and he was wasting no time killing everyone on planet Namek as well. Like, he kills his own henchmen without giving a second thought thought and he's the core reason why Vegeta is so messed up it's like Vegeta had no choice but to be a slave to Frieza for most of his life Frieza basically took Vegeta away from his father and forced him to work for him all of the Saiyans basically had to be Frieza slaves then once Frieza found them as a threat he wastes no time killing off every Saiyan by blowing up planet Vegeta Frieza is heartless and I really love the vengeful theme here. Goku also stands out as a really cool motif in this one. Because Goku represents that of the Earthlings and the Sands. He even states it. For all the Namekians, Sands, and people that you've killed, I'm not going to forgive you. This is, like, his attachments to, his, uh, to Earth are what give Goku that power he needs in order to take advantage of the fight and make a comeback. This is the difference between Vegeta and Goku, and this is why Goku was able to be the one Saiyan living, because at this point Goku's the last Saiyan alive, and he's the one that's able to make to turn the tides and make the difference. I really love the fact that the last Saiyan alive is the one that beats Frieza. I really love that like work of art. I mean, yeah, Broly's alive somewhere, but I'm just, I just love that attention to detail, and I love how Goku became a legend, because beating Frieza was a really huge deal in the Dragon Ball Z world, because once Goku beat Frieza and Vegeta told, like, a soldier, word just spread all over the, the freaking solar system about it. And then Whis learns it later, and then we get Battle of Gods and Resurrection F and all that. Yeah, but like I'm saying... I gotta say, I really love the vengeful motif that passes on here. Piccolo wants revenge on Frieza for all the Namekians that, that he killed. Now, Piccolo didn't originally come from Planet Namek. Piccolo's from Earth. He was a Namekian sent to Planet uh, Earth. But it's still like a form of bond that he has. Plus, since the nail is fused with him now, which he that's permanent, um, he carries that like weight of all the Namekians that Frieza killed with him. So, like, it was a good chance for Piccolo to learn his origin as well. 
And then Vegeta wants vengeance for all the, the stuff he had to go through. He just learned that Frieza was responsible for blowing up his planet, too. And then Goku takes vengeance on him for killing his best friend, Krillin. I gotta say, like, yeah, this saga is definitely really good, and I love all of the fights. Now, what's keeping it from being the best saga for me? I gotta say, a lot happens, but it takes a long freaking time. This is one of the longest sagas in the entire DBZ universe, even in the Kai version, and it's only because a lot of crap is in the middle of all of this. But uh, overall, it's a really good saga. I gotta say, just the length is, it's very lengthy. But other than that, I would definitely give it a watch. It's a very nice saga. I just wish that Yamcha and Tien actually played a better role. But in the next video review, saga review, we will be reviewing the Garlic Jr. Saga. I'll see you all then, everybody. Tyrone the God 3, out.